For decades, there has been a war on drugs. But what about war and drugs? Welcome. My name is David Jolly, and if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, I would really appreciate it if you did. Thanks. Well, cannabis and the United States military have had an awkward relationship for more than 100 years. The military has zero tolerance towards marijuana, and as such, use of the weed while in the military is a definite no-no. However, this doesn't mean the occasional soldier hasn't relied on the substance during difficult times. The earliest connection to the United States military and cannabis can be traced back to a published manual for Army horses entitled The Army Horse in Accident and Disease. Back in the days of our great-grandparents or even great-great-grandparents, the U.S. military supported the use of medicinal cannabis for horses. The manual noted that cannabis could be used medicinally to help horses' abdomen issues as it relieves pain without causing constipation. But back in the early part of the 1900s, the armed forces did not limit the use of cannabis only for horses. According to National Botanicals, before the 1920s, medics of the American Expeditionary Force were taking medical cannabis to Europe to treat troops overseas. Medics used cannabis to help headaches, cramps, and insomnia. Recreational use of cannabis in war by American troops was first reported in 1916 from the Panama Canal Zone. In the same year, thousands of American soldiers were also using cannabis in Mexico during a military expedition. In a 1933 report by the U.S. Army Medical Corps, published in the publication Military Surgeon, titled Marijuana Smoking in Panama, focused on a study of the American Army troops in the Panama Canal, and found, interestingly, that cannabis was generally not addictive and was less harmful to soldiers than alcohol. That was correct then and remains so today, yet the more harmful of the two drugs, alcohol, is legal everywhere. The U.S. then made cannabis illegal federally in 1937. But use of cannabis in the military all changed during the Vietnam War. During the Vietnam War, it's estimated that more than 50% of the armed forces smoked marijuana. Despite federal laws prohibiting the use, the drug was tolerated or at least ignored by many of those in power during the the war. In 1968, John Steinbeck IV, a military veteran who served in the Vietnam War and the son of the novelist John Steinbeck, testified before a Senate subcommittee and proclaimed that, in his opinion, about 60% of American soldiers between the ages of 19 and 27 smoke marijuana. Steinbeck also testified that those in power promoted drug abuse by providing distribution of narcotics such as amphetamines, also known as pet pills, to soldiers in combat. The military cracked down on marijuana after this news became rather public and has maintained its strict policy on marijuana ever since. While the military does not appear to be ready to change their policies, the Veterans Medical Marijuana Safe Harbor Act was introduced to the House last April. The bill would allow veterans to use, possess, or transport medical marijuana and to discuss the use of medical marijuana with a physician of the Department of Veterans Affairs. This appears sensible as cannabis products such as CBD may have valuable medical uses, including as treatment for PTSD, often associated with war times and combat experiences. For more videos on cannabis and the law, please subscribe to this channel.